I'm doing very good. How are you, Chess? I'm doing great. There's so much to cover. I mean, we are in the thick of summer already. Can you believe it? It's already July. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So um, if uh, you're watching, uh, well, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be covering a ton of club softball and uh, some Hot 100 players uh, that have been lighting up the summer. But first, um, we're going to talk about a, a, a lot of uh, you who have been on Flow Softball uh, for the last couple of years know that uh, we've we've covered uh, Taylor Dawkins' story a ton. And uh, Brent, just kind of elaborate and give us an update on, on Taylor Dawkins. Well, for those who don't know, Taylor Dawkins maybe the nicest kid in all of softball. She's such a sweetheart. And a year ago at this time, playing for the SoCal Choppers, uh, she had pain in her side and found out that she had liver cancer. They removed part of her liver. And then she went through um, several months of, of therapy and rehab. She came back and had a magical, like a Hollywood-type script season where she led Norco all the way to the CIF Southern Section Division One Championship game. Uh, she set CIF records with wins. Uh, she was a Gatorade National Player of the Year, Ms. Softball in California, and it couldn't have happened to a nicer, nicer player. Uh, seniors going to Cal State Fullerton, but everyone was greatly saddened to learn about a week ago that uh, tests showed that she had three tumors that returned on her liver. And yesterday, her family, Rick and Debbie, her parents, were close to them. Hope everybody's okay there. Um, Rick and Debbie reported uh, via their Facebook that it looks like that Taylor's going to need a liver transplant. So she's at the UCLA hospital or, or been, had tests there. And, um, you know, what's interesting is she's still smiling, still happy next week. She's going to the ESPYs. But certainly our thoughts and our prayers go out to the family. Today's Rick's birthday. want to uh, wish Taylor's dad a happy birthday. But we just hope that everything goes well, and if that's truly the case, that she does need a liver transplant, that it will happen, and, and it will allow her to keep being the, the great person she is on and off the field. Yeah, absolutely. National uh, Gatorade Player of the Year. Um, it's just an awful thing. Brent, uh, for, for people who are watching, uh, what can they do to help support Taylor and, and her family uh, through, this, through this process? I'd recommend go to Facebook. Rick Dawkins um, does post updates so you can keep in touch. They have a GoFundMe that's helping them with with their their finances. And so, you know, we can put that on our site or give it out. But just I, I would say the easiest thing is go to, to GoFundMe and look up Taylor Dawkins or check out Rick Dawkins' Facebook page and you can find it there. Yeah, um, I know. I'm certainly wishing her all the best and her my thoughts and prayers are with her and her family during this time. And lots of people already giving praise for, for Taylor. Uh, if you're watching, um, you know, we're going to be talking a lot about club softball today. So if you have questions, feel free to submit those questions uh, on Facebook. Um, so everybody out there, thoughts and prayers for Taylor and her family. And like Brent said, uh, if you can help support the family, uh, go to their GoFundMe page um, and just look up Taylor Dawkins. Thanks, Brent. Um, so in other news, right, so it's been a while since we've we've had this Hot 100 show, Brent, um, but, you know, we, we're coming fresh off IDT Boulder and mm -hmm. Colorado Sparkler Fireworks. We're going to get into um, IDT a little bit. So I... I I know you've been watching a uh, club very closely, but how hot are the Corona angels right now? Well, you know, they, they always have talent. There's never a doubt that they, they have the, the horses to compete, but they have two front runner or front line pitchers and Megan Ferriamo going to UCLA, Mariah Maison going to Oregon state and Megan Fariamo, I, I saw her at the SoCal A's Invitational, and I was wowed how bigger, stronger, and more powerful she's gotten. She's just a dominant player that, I, you know, she's a franchise player. And I think she, and with Mariah there too, you know, you need innings. And I, I think those two could carry them all the way to the championship. We had them 
and our preseason 18 and under rankings ranked seventh or eighth. I'm sorry, and now that's looking too low. But you know, if I can go off topic, Chaz, just for a second, let's go down those eight. We had preseason firecrackers, Rico, number one, OC Batbusters, Mike Stith's teams, two, All American Sports Academy, Brian Moretta, uh, it's three, uh, the Bandits, Bill Conroy's team, four. The Cruisers, Mel Sievers' team. You've probably heard of them. Number five. I, I know them. So, it's his birthday today, too. Oh, my happy, dad's, birth- happy birthday, Mel Sievers. Love you, Dad. Yes. He's not uh, watching. We had them number five, and you know, with Chloe Romero, they can win any championship they're in. Uh, number six is SoCal A's, Bruce Richardson's team. Seven was the Birmingham Thunderbolts. And then we had Angels, Tyson, eight. And I think any of those teams could make a run. They've got the, the, the pitching and, and the – so, but what, going back to what you said, yeah, the Corona Angels looked outstanding. Coach Amps and, and Boulder. Yeah, their their um, lineup to me is very stacked. Not only do they have the pitching, but from top to bottom, they're very dynamic. With mm-hmm. Kinsley Washington at the top of the order, but you've got Noel He in in the lineup. Cameron Yabara, who had a terrific year at Los right. Alamitos this year. I mean, they they are uh, looking very very strong. But it's a, it, it, when you look at the bracket breakdown, um, it's it's almost like SoCal A is all over again. When you looked at the 18U uh, finish, you had the Bandits in there. You had Georgia Impact, who just won the SoCal Invitational. I mean, you're absolutely right that when it comes to uh, PGF or WFC, it could be any of these teams that take the national cha- na- national championship. Yeah, and All American Sports Academy, right? They were the mm-hmm. co-champs at yeah. eighteen hundred, and we had them number three. And what made them so strong is out of Northern California, a lot of the top players from the Sorcerer Gold team jumped over uh, when Pete, their coach, uh, retired. So it, it, it's anybody's race this year. I mean, in the past, we've always said, yeah, the front runners looks like you know, and the Firecrackers. Listen, look, let's not discount them. We'll talk about them shortly, but um, I, I think. It's a deep year, as deep as I've seen at the top at the 18-under level. I think anybody can go on a run, and if they get hot and get momentum at the right time, they can, they can win it all. Yeah, to me, it all comes down to pitching, right? When, right? when you look at the top four finishers or the top ten finishers, it's really uh, who's in the circle. And, and you mentioned the cruisers. Chloe Romero was uh, almost like untouchable uh, mm-hmm. during that PGF run last year. And mm-hmm. we saw Brooke Vestal do the same thing uh, last year. And, and she struggled a little bit, but she peaked right at the right time. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to be peaking come uh, end of July here. I'm very, very, very excited. Yeah, going back to Megan and, and your point, and I agree with it. I watched her a couple years ago win the 14 and under PGF National Championship. And she was so dominant and carried the team on her back so much that uh, Marty Tyson gave the, the trophy to her, <laughs> the, the trophy to her. I don't know if she still has it, but she was that dominant. And now I think she's really emerged and come in uh, to that front line pitcher, like I said earlier, that can win a championship. And she is the type, but you know, Chloe Romero is, Brooke Vestal is, um, that they get hot and the team gets some offense behind them. Any, anybody can win it. So I'm excited these next, three to four weeks, we're going to see a dynamic run by somebody. And you were at SoCal Invitational. Uh, who impressed you while you were out there? Oh, boy. Um, team-wise or individual-wise? Individual-wise. Individual-wise, Jocelyn Allo of the Bat Busters. I mean, it seemed like every – she at one point had like four home runs and six at-bats or something crazy. And she she was just crunching the ball. Um She's taken her game to another level. She's the, the player of Mike Stitt's Batbuster team that's gone to Oklahoma. And I think the question mark is going to be where are they going to play her? You know, is she going to be an infielder or is she going to be a you know, DP or what? But um, another um, player that impressed me was Matt, Matty Penta. In fact, is that who I'm, I think I'm thinking of? The pitcher for PA Chaos, the young mm-hmm. pitcher. She was very, very impressive and didn't expect her to come out as, as strong as she did. Um, but you know, we're, we're talking about all of these top players. Megan was very impressive. Alexis Holloway. There was a great pitching duel between those, uh, Alexis Holloway, the Notre Dame bound pitcher. We had her as our national high school player of the year after she, she led her crown point team to the Indiana state championship. Um, she was very, very impressive. 
and she gives the ban- the uh, bandits a chance to go all the way. And there was a really good pitching duel between, um, I think, her and Megan. So, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of good pitchers. Um, Cameron Ibarra, like you said earlier with the Angels, just she's a, a masher. She can do it all. So, I don't know. It, it's it's a great time of year to, to see players emerge, and I'm excited in these next, next couple of weeks to see who's going to step up. Who do you think has uh, the most dynamic and uh, deepest pitching staff that you've seen at the 18U level? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I, I would have to say the Angels right now. I think the, the Bandits are strong. Um, I also... Uh, I, I like um, the firecrackers, and I'll tell you why. Brooke Vestal, she didn't pitch in Colorado. She had jammed her pinky. She's day-to-day, but she'll be ready for PGF. Um, but Bree Jewett, the 2018 pitcher, that she, she looked good in SoCal A's Invitational. She was the, the star uh, in Colorado, and she pitched 90% of the innings and did a great job, and they won the championship. So... I would I would have to say they're deep. If Brooke comes back to the form that led him to the championship last year, and Brooke continues to pitch the way she is, and uh, they have Ryan Denhart going to Maryland, that's a pretty good trio right there. So there, there's a lot of teams that have two deep, and then some like the Firecrackers just mentioned are three deep. Mm-hmm. I'm, I can't I can't wait to see these matchups, and um, you know I'll be out there um, at WFC and PGF. Um, and I'll I'll be able to see uh, the the brackets as they're unveiled um, live. So we'll see what the matchups look like. Um, but moving on to to sixteen U, Brent, the Beverly Bandits just yeah. flat out handled business. Beverly Bandits, uh, coached by Jen Tyrell, and then Bandits Dorsey, who also has a very very strong team. Um, Talk a little bit about uh, Bandage JT. Well, first of all, I think Jen's one of the top coaches in, in club ball. She's won championships. They outscored their opponents twenty nine to three. Yes, and that yeah, and that's and what's interesting is three of the final four teams were all Bandit teams, and in the semis they beat uh, that team led by Sid Suple. I think I finally said it right. Suple, right? yeah, Suple. you got it. You nailed it. <laughs> they faced Montana Fouts team. Uh, Montana Fouts, obviously the outstanding pitcher uh, who's going to Alabama. And they, they it was a one-to-one tie. They went international tiebreaker. And then this was um, the Kettle Hut team. And they scored a one run, but then the Tyrell team scored two. And then they faced Dorsey in the championship. And, and uh, then Jen's team, Tyrell's team, won it all. So that team has great depth. But, man, the Bandits, if you have to look at an organization – Top to bottom with pitching, the Bandits have to be the best. I mean, they've got Megan Bobian. They have Alexis Holloway. They have uh, Montana Fouts. They have Sid Suple. Um, it just goes on and on. They're just deep, deep, deep with pitching. So, uh, but to, and at Boulder and at one level, I don't care if it's 18, 16, 14, to have three of the four final teams from the same organization, that to me is unheard of. Yeah, that's, that's just incredible. And... I think what's so great about watching their team, not only, I mean, you touch on their pitching, but offensively, they're one of the best base running organizations out there. Right. Uh, And to me, you know, when I was coaching, uh, base running is so, so important. And it's so refreshing to see a team run uh, and be aggressive and test the defense. And that's that's one of the many things that I love about watching the Bandits. Mm-hmm. They're a very, very well coached uh, team from uh, top to bottom at every le- uh, age level. Yeah, technically they're sound. They don't make a lot of mistakes, and if they do make a mistake or two, they they, they quickly fix it. And they're the type of team that they'll play you, even if you're a better team with talent. They'll they'll still play you even, and then they'll wait for you to make a mistake and they'll beat you. And obviously they have the pitching, they have the defense. Um, like you said, they run well. They're just smart. They're a well-coached organization from top to bottom. Yeah, and even when I'm going to touch on that Dorsey team, uh, if you haven't had the chance to watch Hope Straight, she is a gamer. Like, yeah. I, I was watching her, I, I believe, 
last year, and she seemed a little bit unorthodox uh, offensively, but the kid can mash, like, any ball, like, in the zone. Um, And then on top of that, she can also pitch uh, for the Bandits. So um, very, very good team. And and if you remember um, Bailey Dowling, um, she moved on to another team, but last year she was on that Dorsey team. Yeah. And uh, that was the first time that I got to watch her. Um, she's in our 2020 Hot 100. Uh, yeah. But another fantastic player uh, going to Alabama. Yeah. Hey, Jess, I, I want to make a correction if I, I may have misspoke. The Dorsey team and the Tyrell team tied. They were co-champs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I guess lightning caused the delay, and so they decided to call it because of flight time. So, it's but okay, just want to give the Dorsey, I forgive you. Dorsey team I forgive their, their, you. I mean, you do hold a lot of information in that noggin of yours. <laughs> I think awesome. we'll I can't you. remember my kids' names, but mm-hmm. I can tell you, you know, well, who's in the Hot 100 in 2021. Like, cool. We're going to move on to uh, 14 new, uh, another co-champs, uh, Choppers and Corona Angels, who we saw, uh, I, I believe, in top four PGF last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, two tremendous teams. Um Obviously, two organizations that have been in the club circuit for a very, very long time, the Fawcett's and the Tysons. Uh, tell me, I know you've watched both these teams, and I have too. Um, what uh, impresses you about the Choppers and Corona Angels? Um, the coaching. Dean does a, a great job, and Marty coaches the 14 team. You know, they, They're just outstanding coaches. So their players play within the system. And these teams also have moved up together and have a lot of talent, but they play well with team, good team chemistry. And that's, but they, they also have pitching, you know? So these, I think are my two favorites going into PGF nationals just because they're, they're just deep. They, you know, it's like last year we watched, you know, uh, some of these teams advance because of depth. And I think these teams, a pitcher can go down and they're not going to miss a beat. Or, you know, their leadoff batter will go 0 for 4 and as someone else can pick up the slack. So I just think that Dean does a great job. He's a great hitting instructor. And, and you know, and Gary too. And then Marty does a fantastic job developing young talent. So I, I just, you know, you see the same names in organizations over and over and over. We talked about the Bandits just because they're so well-skilled at developing uh, within their system. So that's the thing. If I had to say one thing about these teams, it's the system. Players fit the system. Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing that both uh, the Fawcett's and Tyson's did that was totally uh, transformative for the organization was, uh, you know, Marty and Dean decided to coach a younger team and the older team to help develop them and keep that core together and it's it it's really uh, no surprise to see that both the teams at the 18U level and the 14U level excel because Marty's been with you know this 14U team since 12U. Um, I think that's been absolutely transformative uh, to their programs, um, and it's not the easiest thing to do um, as as you've been around the game for so long. Uh, to manage both, but in order to build, I feel like a championship program. You need, you know, that that head honcho down uh, developing the younger talent and making sure that they know the system uh, because sometimes that can get lost if you join a team, you know, if in this, at the 16U level. Um, I know I was very fortunate to just stay with the cruisers uh, for since 14 under. So yeah. um, that was very, very beneficial. Well, speak of continuity, one, one team that we should mention, too, is uh, T.J. Geltz's team, you know, the Tampa Mustangs. I think they have pretty much everybody coming back but one or two players, and they finished very strong last year, and his daughter Avery is a Hot 100 player. So I, I, I don't want to leave them out of the discussion. They have um, maybe not the front-line pitching as the other two, but they've got everybody back, and it's that chemistry, that continuity that makes them, makes them one to watch. Yeah, it, made, it makes me think of that last year's game. Uh, the Corona Angels Tampa Mustangs game that mm-hmm. just went back and forth. I can't remember the number of runs they scored. It like went back into, I don't know if Corona Angels won by 
it was like 18 to 16, something, yeah. it, something yeah. like totally Almost. absurd, going back and forth until the very last inning. It was incredible uh, to see the the fight from both teams just going back and forth. And uh, both coaches have to be proud of how, how their players um, – competed in that tournament but that was the wildest game uh yeah. that i saw at, at pgf last year it was in, it was incredible from like all age divisions granted i wasn't at the 18 u one but um unfortunately but maybe maybe i'll i'll poke my head in uh yeah. this year uh, we got some tampa mustangs fans here um all right so we're gonna uh talk a little bit about the sparkler um I'm sure it's no surprise to you, but Firecrackers Rico takes the Super 48. Yeah, I saw them at the SoCal A's Invitational, and and their their depth is off the charts. I, I'm I'm going to just go down. This is okay, just to give you not like not that this always matters, but the list of on their roster of where they're going to colleges. Okay, so give me okay. five seconds. To go I'm down. ready. Oregon, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Oregon, Duke, UCLA, Arizona, Harvard. That's Bree Jewett, the pitcher that came on Harvard. Tennessee, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Oregon, Auburn, Michigan, Notre Dame, Cal, Stanford, Maryland, Oklahoma, Utah, Michigan. That's a pretty deep team when you're looking at talent, you know, certainly recruitability. But Tony Rico always gets his team to play well. Um, you know, I laughed at last year because at the SoCal A's Invitational a year ago, they looked disjointed. They didn't look very good. Um, and I was like, oh, boy, I don't know how Tony's going to do it. But he always seems to get his team to peak well. I remember a couple of years ago when Tara Blanco got injured at PGF Nationals and Courtney Shaw came in and they, they made it to the final 10. And last year, of course, they, they ran it. They got it. A lot of people like um, um, Brooke came out and stayed with some people. You know, she's from Texas, stayed with some California people. And the chemistry got strong and they won national championship. I can see that happen this year. Um, they're really fast. They, they play small ball so well. Um, Aunt Alyssa Pinto had a really good week. Grace Lyons, outstanding in the in infield. Anna Vines, uh, the, in, outstanding in infield, a great speed. She tweaked her ankle in the semis is what I was told, but um, I'm hearing she should be good for PGF. But depth, 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 and, and coaching. You mm -hmm. know, and, and I also, Rob Weil, maybe the most under- rated I don't even want to say that Rob is a great high school coach great pitching coach and he's Tony's right hand man and just a great coach all around so when you're looking at the firecrackers there's coaching and there's depth you know there's speed and obviously the pitching we talked about so when you get a, like a Bree Jewett that you know just comes out and just dominates at such a high level at such a high prestige tournament you know you're you're in good shape and I know this this might sound like a little thing, but what really impresses me about Tony's teams, uh, how strong mentally they are. Yeah. If you watch if you watch the fine details, they are uh, very good at keeping to their routine, sticking to their routines when they're in the box uh, or whether they're in the pitching circle. And I can't tell you how important that is. When you go and pitch in big moments, when you go and hit in big moments, and um, you see a lot of these players going on to Oklahoma and these big programs that are making it to the World Series, I think Tony does such a great job preparing them for that because they're already good athletes. They're already yeah. uh, very talented, very skilled, but we all know this. When you get to the next level, it's the biggest difference is like what's between the ears. How right. do you handle pressure? Um, how do you handle slumps? I mean, th those are some of the biggest things and biggest hurdles you have to get over when you get to that next level. And that's that's just... an excellent point. Excellent point. And, you know, I, I was talking to a, a national championship coach once, and she said, I like to recruit Marty Tyson kids. And the reason she said that was because of mental toughness. And, you know, you know this, Chez, better than anybody. Every pitch is a battle. In club or high school, especially, you can take some pitches or, you know, at bats off or whatever. But every battle, they've studied you, you've studied them, you, you know, it, it's, it's act, react. But the thing, going like to Marty's specific case, and that's why you see a Shea Knighton step up and do so well, is because they're prepared. And, and I've, you know, I've been told uh, by many people that 
with Marty, you go to practice and you have to battle to compete. If you take a practice off, you're not going to start the next game. And they and he'll chew them out. We've seen I've, I've seen Marty have a, a batter do something on the first pitch that he instructed her not to do, and he had her walk that long dug walk to the dugout and and brought somebody else in. It's like you're going to do it the way we teach you and coach you to do it. And so the highest compliment that I've heard to a coach like a Marty or like you said a Tony or a Mike Stith or a Bill Conroy or you know, a rock with the, the bolts is they prepare you mentally, not just physically, but they prepare you mentally for what the, the next step up is at the college level. And, and that's what makes these teams uh, elite. And that's why we see them year in and year out, because they know how to prepare you in all aspects of the game, especially the mental game. Great talk, Brent. I love this. But we're going to, you know, we've talked about the big club organizations, but let's talk about a couple hidden gems. So, uh, you know, uh, I guess it was a couple weeks ago, I was at Top Gun Invitational and got a, got the chance to watch a lot of the top teams out of the Midwest. And uh, Nebraska Gold has been uh, playing very, very well. Uh, one of the most impressive uh, pitchers that I saw, a 2021 pitcher, uh, her name is Jordan Ball. Uh, we're actually going to be doing a, a rising star on her very shortly. But she pitched uh, her way, and the teams, I mean, offensively, they did well, too. Uh, but in the circle, uh, she got to the championship game at Top Gun, and then she got to the championship game in Colorado. Very, very impressed with these Nebraska teams. And not to mention, at the 18U level, the Nebraska Quakes took the championship game at the 18U level. Uh, yeah. And that was um, against Nebraska Gold, which is kind of like it's kind of interesting to see two Nebraska teams uh, compete uh, compete against each other in the championship game. Uh, another team to watch for is uh, Select Fast Pitch out of the Kansas City area, who won at the 16U level at Top Gun. Jordan Weber, 2019 pitcher. Holy smokes, folks! She is the real deal. She's going to uh, she's. Verbally committed to Missouri, but she's a pure strikeout pitcher. I mean, she hits her spots. She can spot her rise ball. Um, she can hit you with the screwball down and in. Uh, very, very impressed with those two teams and uh, those two players. And, and we'll get to see them again on a bigger stage at the World Fast Pitch Championship. Yeah, and Chess, you make a great point that there's – What's exciting about the, the future of softball is it used to be very California-centric, but there's now talent at, at literally in every region. And, you know, it, you have a team like the De Marini Aces coming out of, you know, the Casey Peppers have always been there. You know, it seems like they've always been there. But now these Nebraska teams are stepping up, and the De Marini Aces are good, and, you know, the Bandits are in the Midwest. And I, I'm just excited to see, you know, in the South, obviously the South softball's exploded at the youth and cl club level in Georgia, especially. But even you could go up into New England and go in the Pacific Northwest, and there's teams and players that are emerging. And 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 you're and you're definitely right at these tournaments. Um, the Nebraska, the select fast pitch, they're they're coming on. They're they're developing. They're they're learning. And I think you know with the the growth of the internet and coaching and specialization that, that they can pick up and train and develop as well as any program out there. So I'm excited to see that softball is literally east coast to west coast now. Yeah, absolutely. We got a question from Josh Howes, Brent, and he is asking what's the best what what's the best way to get on your radar for 2022 Hot 100? I can't believe we're <laughs> talking about that right now. Wow. But I mean, I, it's it, it's not the first time somebody's asked me that, and I'm sure you would probably agree. Yeah, you know, I, I, the reason I laugh is we just did the 2021s, and we got you know slammed by people going, "Oh my gosh, what's next? Fifth graders and kindergartners, and to, to just think 2022s. Wow, these are they we're really getting young." Um, the, the answer is simple: if it's your 2022 or your 2018, it's just. Talk to your club coach, have him send in information like a resume, like a bio, send it to us. You know, you can find our email on the site um, and just send us a link if you want to, if you have YouTube videos. Uh, but just, you know, we get emails all the time from parents and parents are shockingly a little biased. 
But if a club coach, <laughs> if a club coach will recommend you, and 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 that, I mean, their job is to develop and promote their players, right? Mm-hmm. So if they can step up and and be honest, and and I'm I'm happy to report, like ninety five percent of the club coaches will be straightforward because they know if they oversell their players, it's going to hurt them down the road. So just have your club coach um, just send us information. What makes you good? What what makes you stand out? Send us some highlights. You know, what are your top stats, accomplishments, honors, like a resume? Mm-hmm. And then send us some video or whatever you can. Um, and, you know, I, I remember, Chez, you said this a while ago. We're looking for players that step up big at, in the big time spotlight events, the tournaments. So if you have, you know, done some things at some of these tournaments, you know, like we're live streaming DeMarini Invitational this weekend. Next week, we're doing the World Fast Pitch Championship. If you're going to be there and you do well and you go 16 for 20, let us know that. That that rings true. That That's important. So just send us the information. Put us on Put yourself on our radar, but do it through the club coach. And if you know the parent wants to send information to you know supplement, it, we save all this information. We put it in files, but you know twenty twenty two we'll get to it down the road. But right now, we're in we have club fever, baby. <laughs> yeah, club fever is right. Yeah. So uh, if you're watching and you'll be at uh, De Marini or World Fat World Fast Pitch Championship, you can tweet at us at Flow Softball, or if you're on Instagram and you have a cool video. Uh, you can always tag us in in one of those videos. Um, we're so happy to highlight and recognize players who do well, um, but obviously we can't be everywhere, and that's just the honest truth, you know. But um, with your help, uh, we can certainly promote those athletes uh, when they excel at the next level. Mm-hmm. All right, Brent, we have got the De Marini Invitational. We've got some really good teams here. I'm just gonna go go down the line here uh some of the top ones obviously uh at the 18 u level we've got bandits uh bill conroy thunderbolts uh de marini aces jersey intensity uh georgia impact rhode island thunder uh bandits allen at the 16 u 16 u level we've got bandits jt who just won or was co-champs uh in Boulder, uh, Illinois Chill, uh, Beverly Bandits Dorsey, uh, who I'm sure will jump up in the rankings uh, on the next go around. Uh, mm-hmm. at, and, and even at the 14 year level, that's what's so cool about this tournament is that uh, it mixes the age groups. But we're going to be able to see Batbusters Campbell, who we, who we ranked number one in the 14 year level. And then uh, the number three team at the 14 year level, the Tampa Mustangs. That's quite a lineup, Brent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and what's great is it's all in one complex. You know, there's six fields. We're going to be streaming the four main fields, and and I just I love when you have different teams coming from out of state, but also I mean you have teams from California to Washington, Florida and Georgia. I mean it's it's not huge in terms of number of teams, but the quality is outstanding. But it to me it's almost like it's this. It's the Beverly Bandits versus the rest of the world, <laughs> and it's and it's kind of like the Bandits are going to defend their turf, and are they going to be able to have three or three of the four in the you know the championship like they did in, in, in Boulder uh, at sixteen? So I, I'm excited. You know, I don't know if you mentioned uh, Jersey Intensity. Kevin O'Donnell's program has mm-hmm. you know some fourteen and eighteen teams and sixteen teams. Yeah, so, and you know who pitched well was Lauren Mathis, the uh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going, going to Georgia. To, um I was really impressed speech. with her. I was too. She's she's the one that could, you know, if she gets some fire, she could carry them very far in any tournament. So um I love this this tournament because it's it's high in quality, not as much as quantity. But you're getting that means you're gonna get good games almost every game. And you're and you're gonna see nice mixes that you typically do. And you know, like you have the Colorado Stars. Watch the Ohio Outlaw Premiers, uh Premier team, Warren Wolf's program. They've got some good, you know, talent. So but yeah, I, I wanna see the Florida teams. I wanna see Texas Sudden Impact. I wanna see Lady Lightning from North Carolina and you know, and, and I think there's a lightning team from Minnesota. I love how they they draw from all over the country. And then Patrick Lewis, you know, a lot of these teams that we saw SoCal A's that look good, Patrick Lewis's impact team will will, will be there. So it, it's just going to be an outstanding weekend. So make sure if you if you like softball, you need to be watching D Marini Invitational this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Oh yeah, 
And then uh, next week, World Fast Pitch. I'll be there, Brent. Um, I'll actually be speaking on Monday uh, at one of the seminars. So if you're if you're going to be out uh, in Kansas City, be sure to stop by and uh, check it out. Um, we've they've got a pretty good lineup of uh, speakers. Uh, all really devoted to help educating uh, coaches and parents and players. Um, very, very excited. Jamie Loprize is spearheading that. And then um, I'll just be out covering the event. We've got a pro game going on in K- Kansas City with uh, USSA Pride and Texas Charge. That'll actually that'll be our first ga- pro game uh, on the site, Brent, on Tuesday. I know, and that, yeah, exciting. Yeah. We're going to be doing, what, nine MPF games. Yeah. So. Can you believe it? We're going to have a- Dee Marini, uh, NPF game, and then we're right into World Fast Pitch. Are you going to be available in case someone goes down that you can suit up and step in? You know, if I have to, I will. I, <laughs> I have to tell you, Brent, I played in a slow pitch tournament not that long ago, and I'm okay. sure it doesn't surprise you. We took home the championship. That's yeah. right. I mean – I, isn't Chez like Greek for champion or something? Maybe I. I missed. think so. I think. Yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, champion or queen, queen. Queen. Uh, yeah, queen. It's <laughs> it depends on what region of the world that you're in. So um, there you go. Turn a. I I think we turned a double play. I was very stoked about that. It just all came back. You know, just like s- second nature. It's uh, like riding a bike, right? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, if you're if you're going to be at World Fast Pitch, um, we're going to do some cool video content as far as far as doing like a bracket unveiling and just interviews and recaps. And we're just going to have a good time out there and uh, watch some great softball. Um, so at World Fast Pitch, obviously, we've got a ton of Bat Buster teams, Firecrackers, Georgia Impact, the Vipers, yep. Select Fast Pitch, who I mentioned uh, earlier, the Colorado Stars, I mean, uh, Texas Bombers, Mizuno Impulse. I mean, there, this, this tournament has grown significantly uh, from last year. Uh, and you know what's cool, Brent? Team Mexico will also be competing at right. World Fast Pitch. So you got some an- international flair there. Um, so uh, we'll be out there and promoting um, a lot of the athletes and teams. And um, stay tuned next week. Um, I'll be putting out an article on some of the top uncommitted players who are going to be at the World Fast Pitch Championship. So very excited to highlight and follow those players. Um, so... Um, just remember, if you're out at De Marini or World Fis- World Fast Pitch Championship, that you uh, tag at Fla- Flow Softball with uh, some of your killer stats or videos. Mm-hmm. Brent, always a pleasure. Oh, a lot of always fun. A we could, pleasure. We yes. could talk for hours. I know, I know, but we're not we're not going to bore people. <laughs> I got a lot of work to do. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we've got some um, people are giving us praise here. Uh, Brent and Chez are full of softball knowledge. Some people uh, doing some cheering for the Nebraska Quakes. Hey, guys, thanks thanks so much for watching and tuning in to the Hot 100 show. Next week we won't be here. I'll be in Kansas City, uh, you know, covering that event. So just remember you can follow all the WFC uh, coverage on Flow Softball. We'll, we're going to be doing videos. Uh, article recaps, interviews, and live streaming the heck out of that event. Brent, thanks for for joining us. You bet. Queen Chaz. Yep. That's your new nickname. Champion. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.